This is Scott Kidder, uh, KK6DCI. I'm doing another uh, video here where I'll show some of the new features that I've added to HSMM Pi recently. Um, so uh, if you've seen the, the first video I did, uh, you might have noticed that we have this section where you can see a list of all the neighboring mesh nodes. And um, since then, I've added uh, this other section where it shows mesh services that are um, being announced throughout the um, OLSRD. Uh, mesh network. Um, so you'll see that I've got two services over here. Um, you can pretty much anything that you can you can uh, do TCP or UDP port forwarding for. You can set up a uh, a service for port forwarding um, for nodes within the mesh. Um, so I'll show you how that's configured. Also over here you can you can see these icons that uh, it it represents a little little globe, right? So by clicking on that. Um, It'll pop up a map that shows the uh, location of the node. Um, so here it's got the latitude and longitude. If you've got internet connectivity, then it'll show you a, uh, a uh, Microsoft Bing Maps uh, representation of the location. So it's kind of useful if you've got a lot of, a lot of nodes in your mesh network. Uh, you can um, track their locations. Um, so I'll show you how that that's configured as well. So if you if you're logged in, uh, you can go into the admin section, and there's a uh, services area. So in here you can set up uh, services that'll be hosted on a particular node. So here I've got a uh, secure shell or SSH uh, service that's being advertised through this node. This node being uh, KK6DCI-5. Um, so what what all these settings mean are that um, if you connect to uh, KK6DCI-5 on port 7022, it will forward that traffic to this host um, behind the node, which is uh, 172.27.2.22 on port 22 using TCP. Um, so it's got a URL that it's that it's uh, presenting right here. So this URL will be um, announced throughout the mesh network. Um, so if you went over to a different mesh node, um, you would see the list of services. And uh, depending on what your browser is or what your platform uh, platform is, whether you're using Linux, Mac OS X, or Windows, um, you could probably click on the link and then it would um, open the appropriate application, whether that's PuTTY or Terminal, and um, allow you to connect. So you can add or remove services um, for forwarding. Um, so you, you see all the fields here that were on the previous uh, previous screen. So if you go back to services, um, you can delete or add. As soon as you um, do one of those operations, you'll have to reboot the node for the change to take effect. Um, so I'll go ahead and show you how the port forwarding works. So if I go over to another node here, you can see this is KK6 dash, KK6 DCI-3. Um, you'll see this service right here. So I'll click on it. Um, in my case, I'm using Mac OS 10, so it's going to launch a terminal. Um, I'll go ahead and allow. And you can see that it um, establishes a uh, connection to KK6 DCI-5 um, on port 7022. Then that ends up being forwarded to um, the appropriate um, machine behind that mesh node. So I'll also show you how you can configure location information. So I'll jump back over to uh, KK6DCI-5, go to admin, click on location. Then here you can uh, you can set up the Bing Maps API key. So Bing, as well as uh, Google Maps, uh, pretty pretty much any of the the uh, high quality mapping services out there require that you um, have an account with them, um, and by having an account, they'll give you an API key. So anytime you uh, uh, try to request uh, uh, satellite maps or stream maps or topo maps, you'll need to present that API key. So um, you can go to Bing and, and uh, Google that. That's kind of a separate thing. But once you have your API key, you can just drop it in here. And, uh, and then you're off and running. 
um, and then you can enable this uh, checkbox to transmit the location throughout the mesh. So you could you could con configure your uh, mesh node to um, store the location information, whether that's a, a fixed location or from a GPS source. Um, so you can specify the GPS device name um, and uh, optionally transmit that location throughout the mesh. Um, so being able to get the location data from a GPS device is um, pretty valuable because if you had mobile nodes in the mesh network, um, being able to track their location and uh, in, in near real time is, is, is pretty amazing. Um, so you could, have, you could conceivably have a mesh node that's on a vehicle or on a person and you could track their location and know their location in relation to other mesh nodes. And uh, it's useful for diagnostics as well as just keeping track of the topology of the mesh. Um, so I'll go back over here to SOAR uh, status. And uh, yeah, so you can see the nodes which, uh, which are transmitting location data. Uh, so in this mesh, I've got five nodes. Um, dash one and dash two are HS, uh, HSMM mesh or uh, HAM mesh nodes. Um, three, four, and five are all HSMM PI nodes. Um, they all interact just perfectly fine. Um, in fact, this laptop that I'm uh, recording this on right now is connected to an HSMM mesh um, Linksys WRT54G router. Uh, with um, HSMM mesh, and it's communicating perfectly fine with uh, HSMM Pi mesh nodes. So um, go ahead and uh, uh, comment on the video or give me some feedback, and uh, um, looking forward to improving the project and hearing from people who are, who are using it. All right, this is KK6 DCI, clear.